If you watched the last episode of this compressor series, you know that we tore apart one of these maxi track air compressors in search of better reliability, more volume, and just to improve it any way that we can on a budget. The results were excellent, but I think we could do better. I just got back from a 10 day off road trip and I use this pretty much every day. We were blowing out air filters, we were airing up tires constantly because we were having to cross the highway a bunch, and it worked. Everything did what it's supposed to. However, I hear a small air leak somewhere. It's not that bad wherever it's coming from, and there's also an excessive noise coming from this thing somewhere. So what I wanna do today is I'm gonna pull this apart, I'm gonna fix whatever is wrong with it, the, just try to troubleshoot this extra chatter that I'm hearing, and then I think I'm gonna like port the heads. I've got an idea to upgrade the air filters in this to hopefully bring a little bit more flow. And I've thought about it and I think I have a pretty good solution to maybe clean this up a little bit on the, the middle here so we can build some sort of a heat shield. Clearly these maxi track compressors leave a little bit to be desired, but for the price point, I think that they're very hard to beat. And if you're a guy like me, who likes to tinker, this is such a great opportunity to have a fun little project. You can experiment with some different ideas and see how far you can push something like this on a budget. Once we troubleshoot this noise and fix this leak, I'd like to experiment with opening up some of the internals on this compressor and see if we can get more flow just by opening up some of the holes that came on at factory. See if we can pull more air into the compressor, which in turn would hopefully push more air out of the compressor. As you can see, I'm taking the liberty of exercising a little bit of engine builder math here, which is if some is good, more is better. So what I did is I opened up this intake hole a little bit in order to draw more air and hopefully it'll make more compressed air at the end of the day. But that's not the only thing that we're gonna do to the intake on this compressor. I opened up this hole a little bit in the middle, well, a lot of bit, and I don't know if that's gonna make much of a difference, but it's a free mod. But one thing that I do think is gonna make a difference is that we are gonna make our own filter material that we're just gonna push in here, and then we're gonna drill a giant hole in the top here. So before, it would suck all the air in in these little gaps that are between the cap and the top of this, I guess it's not really the head, we'll just call it the head, between the head and this top here. But it's like tiny, tiny little gaps, and I don't know how much air can freely move through there, but we want it to be as free as possible. So. I have some air filter material that we're gonna cut into a circle. We're gonna put it in there. We're gonna drill a huge hole in the top to make it to where it's super easy for this thing to draw air into the cylinder. I am 99% sure that this is the source of our leak because when I tightened one side down, I could feel that it was perfect and the other side felt like it needed another quarter turn, but I would have to give it a full turn in order to make it to where both of these would sit flush. And my concern was cracking this. So what we did is we're gonna eliminate this all together. We drilled and tapped both sides to a 3 8 pipe tap or pipe thread, which is really common here in the States and there's lots of adapter options. And we're gonna go from 3 8 uh, pipe thread to a 3 8 compression fitting. And then we're gonna use more of this cheap soft copper that comes in the form of like a hose flex connection for like a faucet or a kitchen sink. Now we, in the last episode, you might remember I talked about how this manifold is expandable. We're, ex we're gonna exercise that expandability and we're gonna dump both of these into the manifold independently. As far as that chatter, I shook everything I could everywhere. And the only thing that I could find is this. I think that what I needed to do is, I think that, that one of these heads kind of loosened up just a little bit and it was giving me a little extra noise. So 
when I do a final assembly at the end of this video, I'm just gonna tighten everything down just a little bit more. I was a little too soft in tightening it before because I didn't wanna damage any of these O-rings that are making the seal, but I think we could tighten it up a little bit more and get rid of that noise. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this manifold, we're gonna drill it, we're gonna tap it, and we're gonna join both of these heads into one connection. comments of the last video, many of you suggested that I use vacuum grease as an assembly lubricant whenever I put all this stuff together. I found some stuff from Super Lube on Amazon, bought it, and that is what I will be assembling everything with in this version of mods for the air compressor. Not bad. So I have a theory, I wish that I had a way to measure CFM, but I think that these intake mods that we made today are probably going to be the biggest improvement we'll see out of all of it. Opening up, you know, holes to make a bigger, all great. The electrical, very good. But the fact that I can feel vacuum. So first off, when I put my hand near this intake hole, I can feel it drawing air, which is a good sign and it's what you'd expect. But when I actually like seal it up and it's forcing the air to go through those little reliefs that are all the way around there from the factory, I feel a little bit of vacuum on my hand, which is an indication that it wasn't flowing as good as it could be. And it wasn't maximizing the ability of this compressor to do its job. So I think that this actually, for how cheap the mod is and how easy it is, I think that this might end up being one of the biggest improvements we would see if we had the ability to show some sort of like a CFM difference between stock and here. Uh, now, anyway, we're not done. What I wanna do next is I wanna mess around with these Anderson connectors. I had some in the last video, but they were the wrong size, so I didn't use them. Um, but now I've got the right size, and so what I would like to do is cannibalize a little bit more of this uh, jumper cable that we use to make these other leads and figure out a nice clean way that we can hook it into the truck without having to pop the hood every time. I recently upgraded the battery in this truck to the biggest Optima that I could possibly find. And I also like the upgrade of going to a 3.8 stud instead of the traditional like circular connection that you find in most modern batteries. I added a bus bar and the driver's side fender going from that 3 8 connection. And this gives me the ability to expand the electrical system into little devices like these Anderson connections. Now all we have to do is crimp and solder a couple different fittings. We need to route it in a way that makes sense and make sure everything's very well insulated to prevent any future fires or potential headaches down the road.
these Anderson style fittings just unlocked a whole nother thing in my brain of stuff that we could take advantage of that power port for. So in the future, I wanna come up with more uses for that because we've got four gauge wire right there. I mean, I could have some sort of a portable inverter or I don't know. I just think that there's a lot of opportunity with a connection point like that right off the battery. And check this out. I mean, it's so nice that now our lead off of our uh, compressor is nice and short, which is gonna make it easy to put back in the box in the place that I have it. And these have made it to where I can turn this back into a set of jumper cables. So now I have a short lead that would go to the truck, to this truck. But if I'm gonna be in like a RV or whatever, something different that I need a longer, like an extension, I have a natural extension now from the original parts that we sourced for this build uh, to begin with. So win, win, win. The next video. I can't believe there's gonna be part three to this thing. I, I didn't even think there's gonna be a part one. I was just gonna do all this off camera, but I came up with a whole bunch of ideas while I was doing all this work today, and I need to order parts before I can build this shield. I'd like to figure out a way to cool this as it's being used, and I have some ideas. So anyway, for the next video, I wanna pull this back apart one more time. I would like to either add more reeds for the intake side so it's easier for it to draw even more air into the cylinder, or I would like to replace these reeds with something larger. If you know of a place that I can buy the little reeds, which is basically like a valve on the bottom of the head, um, something that's an upgrade, something that's larger, or just tell me what type of material would be best uh, to replace these, I would love to get that information. And then in the next one, let's like supercharge this bad boy. We're gonna cool it, we're gonna open up the head and make it to where it has the ability to draw even more air. And uh, we can finally build some sort of really sweet aluminum shield that can go over the top of this. And then I also need to figure out how I'm gonna build a handle. So anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. We'll see you on the next one.